students, and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian, and I'm streaming to you from beautiful Victoria on the west coast of Canada, the capital of the province of British Columbia. Welcome, students. Hi, Araz. Good to see you in this class as well. If you're asking me, I live in Victoria. Uh, welcome, Boule, Ariana, middle name of my daughter. Um, nice to see many, many uh, students in the class. Uh, Ugul Han, you are very welcome. I saw your message at the beginning of the class. That's uh, great. Okay. Uh, so <clears throat> in this class, we are looking at uh, task two writing. We're finishing the essay we started yesterday for that band nine high mark. If you missed yesterday's class, no worries. We will look at the introduction and review that at the beginning. Uh, this class is presented to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS success. Check us out there for the general IELTS. It's gieltshelp.com. Uh, we have lots of resources for you on both of our websites. This is our academic web portal here with the blue background. All you need to do is click that big red button to join the premium package. It is a one-time payment for lifetime access, so it's really, really well worth it. Uh, we are an official IELTS uh, test registration center and uh, British Council agents, so we know what we're doing and you are in good hands. Uh, this is general IELTS. It's the green background. Same idea. Big red button. Click that to join our premium package. Uh, Diyugi, welcome to our group of members. Thank you for joining. Make sure to send me an email so I can hook you up with our perks with those uh, videos and practice exams. Um, Adrian at aehelp.com, that's my email, so send it there. Hi, Jainil, Rashika, Rajvir, good to see you in the class. Uh, of course, we have apps to support our websites. Um, Academic IELTS Help app links to aehelp.com. General IELTS Help app links to gieltshelp.com. You can follow us on Instagram, IELTS underscore aehelp, and gieltshelp Help as well. And you can get our practice exams from Amazon also. You can order our books. Just search for A Helps Academic IELTS or GE Helps General IELTS. Uh, we have live classes like this in virtually real-time streaming. So I know sometimes people are like, oh, it's a little bit choppy and unclear. It's because we're almost in real time. There's only a short delay between um, comments in the chat and myself. Uh, so classes are according to universal time, 12.30 to 13.30 for members and 14 to 15 o'clock with the all chat class Wednesdays to Saturdays, okay? Um, so keep that in mind. Tomorrow we will have a couple more classes, uh, speaking part two and speaking part three. Okay, cool. Let's get back to uh, yesterday's writing task two, uh, which we started. Okay. Um, yeah, Laryent is saying your voice is very clear now. I'm glad about that. I made some adjustments to the microphone setup, so it's good to hear. Um, all right, so uh, this was the question we looked at yesterday. IELTS task two writing. You should spend about 40 minutes on this task. Uh, many advancements in technology are making people's lives easier. Users need to think and do less to achieve tasks. Discuss the positives and negatives of this development and give your own opinion. So... We talked about this, uh, we came up with some good ideas, we did some good critical thinking, planning, visualization, we came up with a solid thesis statement, let me just go to that. Uh, this was our thesis statement from yesterday, the deficits of over-reliance on technology are physical and mental deterioration for humans. However, I believe that the positives can be more significant such as saving time and energy for enjoyable, healthy, and social activities. Okay, that was our thesis statement. It's very important. Welcome Carolina, our moderator. Good to see you in the class. 
And finally, yesterday we completed our introductory paragraph. Uh, your introductory paragraph is arguably the most important component of your essay. If you have a good introduction, you're on your way to a great band score. If you have a bad introduction, you're on your way to a bad band score, and that's true also for university uh, as well. Um, so if you have a good introduction, you'll get a great mark. If not, not so much. In the real world, good introduction. People will continue to read your writing. Bad introduction. Many people will stop and not read further. Okay, so introductions are crucial. Introductions usually have three components. First is the hook. Uh, humans have become extremely dependent on technology in modern times. Then comes the definition and the importance. On a daily basis, people simplify their lives by using technological aids to communicate, work, and travel. Uh, notice how I didn't put and so on or etc. here, okay? Uh, I do not recommend using ETC or and so on in your writing. Um, it's uh, kind of like using the word things. It has no value. It's like, okay, and so on. So other things that I should think about as the reader. Uh, so you don't need to write ETC or and so on. Everybody clear on that? Okay. Uh, those are, in some cases, in some rare cases, they're useful, but usually you do not need to use that uh, expression or that term and so on. Just give some of the key points like technological aids to communicate work and travel and then put an end. Okay. Um, people generally know that there are more. You're just giving those as some clear examples. Okay. Janiel and Kaldeep say cool. Okay. So things, stuff, ETC and so on. Don't use them. That's right, Sammy. Okay. All right, um, so the long-term effects of this relationship with technology warrants further investigation. So that's why this is important to talk about because we're heavily dependent on technology. It has a major impact on human lives. And so we should discuss how this is going to evolve into the future, okay? Uh, yeah, Lee Stevens is asking, would it even cost points? Yes, it could, um, because it uh, decreases the overall coherence and quality of the essay. Okay. All right. Um, the deficits of over-reliance on technology are physical and mental deterioration. However, I believe that the positives can be more significant, such as saving time and energy for enjoyable, healthy, and social activities. Okay, so we have two body paragraphs. The first one are the negatives, the physical and mental deterioration. Uh, deterioration means breakdown or decrease, okay? Uh, and then uh, we have a second body paragraph, which will be about the fact that technology can save us time and energy so that we can be more involved in healthy and social activities. So let's do this together. Uh, we're going to get into the body paragraphs. So, as many of you know, body paragraph one is going to be about thesis point one. Uh, which are the negatives. Of using technology. Now, what you have to think about uh, when you're thinking about uh, this thesis point one, the first sentence is going to be your topic sentence. And your topic sentence, simply put, is um, a different perspective or a deeper definition of your thesis point one. Okay, so thesis point one, the start is topic sentence. which in essence is a deeper definition and paraphrase, we can also say it that way, of uh, thesis point one. Okay, 
So um, here we have to kind of think about this um, over-reliance on technology leads to physical and mental uh, deterioration. So what do we mean by that? Give me another way to express that. Give me a definition for that that further clarifies this concept um, for uh, the reader. Okay, I'm going to write that sentence, you write the sentence, and then the topic sentence, and then we'll compare what you wrote with what I wrote, and then we'll go from there. Muzz Club says, cool. All right. I can tell that some of you have been doing homework because you're coming up with sentences extremely fast, uh, which is great. I love seeing that. Uh, Jassy says, um, people who are accustomed to using uh, mechanical devices that may seem beneficent are more vulnerable to potential long-lasting illness, thereby grappling with detrimental health consequences, including... Um, Jassy, that seems a bit long-winded and wordy. It's kind of... Um, <laughs> I, I said this before in a class. It's like uh, the term we have for this in English is loosey goosey. Uh, so it doesn't seem clear and focused. Uh, don't worry so much about your word choice, Jassy. You should choose words carefully, but um, don't get too lost in your word choices so much so that you lose your coherence and the focus the conciseness of your ideas. You have to be concise, okay? Concise means say it in a short way. Little Mermaid says, advanced technology can lead to physiological problems when people become over-reliant on it. Furthermore, the lack of manual work and activities may also be hazardous to people's fitness. Okay, Little Mermaid, uh, the first half, uh, advanced technology can lead to physiological problems. Um when people become over-reliant on it, I think is just a repeat of the thesis. So it's unnecessary. However, uh, the second half of your sentence, so lack of manual work and activities may be hazardous to people's fitness. I think that's on the right track. I think there you're giving another perspective. Okay. So you should uh, kind of start with your second half there. I think that's where you're getting into the meat and bones of that topic sentence. Uh, Rashika says, users are dependent on technology to obtain their daily targets. In this process, people become less active both mentally and physically. Um, yeah, Rashika, I think that works. That's good. You are leading into your explanation a bit, I think. But I, overall, I do believe that that's a good uh, start for body one. Okay. Vu Lee says, one of the clear uh, demerits of overusing technology is that individuals lose their motivation to conquer difficult goals for themselves. I believe you're explaining the idea of mental deterioration there, Vuli. I wouldn't start with that, but that could be a part of your body paragraph. Janiel says, people are engaging a lot in technological devices and appliances, thereby they are suffering more from laziness and being under-motivated. Okay, Janiel, uh, suffering more from laziness or suffering from more laziness and... Um, from under motivation. Let's try to make some parallel grammar there, Janiel, in those two points at the end of that topic sentence. Otherwise, it's good. Okay. Bakrat says, uh, we should begin by saying the use of advanced tools push individuals away from physical and mental activities um, for long periods of time. Okay, yeah, so many of you are on the right path, okay? So, um,
Okay. So uh, here is my topic sentence. And a good practice to do at home to make sure that you are saying something a little different, something a little bit new, is to read thesis point one. So the deficits of over-reliance on technology are physical and mental deterioration. Okay, so what do I mean by over-reliance? Perhaps I can define that as uh, daily use of technology. So it's very rare that people will go camping or will turn off all of their electronic devices and just spend a day without technology, which by the way is an interesting exercise and I recommend trying that at some point in time. It can be very refreshing. So here I define that over-reliance as the daily use of technology has created a stagnant lifestyle. Um, okay, so stagnant lifestyle means that we're not moving, we're stagnating, we're sitting in one place, in one spot, kind of not doing, okay? And I'm gonna change this to plural. Stagnant lifestyles, okay? Uh, whereby, further explaining, whereby, basically this term whereby, I use this to um, tell the reader or the audience that in this case or in this situation, so whereby people are less physically and mentally active, okay? So people simply aren't moving their muscles or their uh, brain cells as much. And this leads to numerous psychological and physiological challenges, okay? So again, kind of reflecting on the mental um, and uh, physical uh, difficulties, okay? So really emphasizing that point. now. This may be a little bit redundant, but it is emphasis, and it's allowing me now to go into more explanation. Also, I'm uh, teaching you some new words and new ways to express physical and mental. So phys mental, psychological, physical, physiological. Okay, uh, now comes an explanation. Okay. So when you're thinking about the explanation, uh, you need to think about like, well, what do you mean? So um, so think about like the questions, how does this happen? Why does this happen? So um, why, why do people become physically less active and how um, do people have physical problems um, from depending too much on technology? So you want to have a clear explanation. And when you're thinking of this explanation, really think quantitative. Okay. So... So when I, um, when I mean quantitative, I mean numbers, okay? So I'm starting my explanation like this. As people sit in front of their computer screen for 10 hours a day, um, of course, uh, we want to emphasize the use of technology to make lives easier um, to... Okay, so we keep reflecting on that. So as people sit in front of their computer screens for 10 hours a day to accomplish their office work, instead of doing manual labor, manual labor would be physical labor, okay? Um, so I'm explaining the idea, keeping it very visual, and that's how you keep going. I wanna see what you're coming up with because I don't just want to give you the information course, it's going to be unique every time depending on your task uh, to question. So uh, start working on the explanation. So again, body paragraphs, first sentence, topic sentence, then 
Many uh, teachers will call it your supporting point one. Your supporting point one is your explanation, okay? All right, 545 Hamant for some great examples for writing task two. Check out the blogs on our website, ahelp.com and gltshelp.com, okay? All right, Janiel says, individuals who are spending more time with technology, such as four to five hours using phones on the couch, riding electric bikes, uh, they are both avoiding daily exercise for physical well-being and career goals for being mentally uh, motivated. Yeah, very good, Janiel. That's a great explanation, okay? I really like it. That's good. That works well. All right. Kaldeep says, as machines are more accurate and work does not require retesting, they can also operate with speed, like eight hours work can be accomplished in just two. Uh, Kaldeep, you're off topic. You're focusing on the efficiency of machines. Uh, Kaldeep, always keep the topic in mind, okay? So, uh, new technology reduces the need for human effort, and then keep the controlling idea, the pros and cons of this. So, you're not just talking about this, but you're talking about this trend for people. Okay, so careful with your topic and controlling idea. All right, Rashika says, in modern times, people use elevators to get to the highest building, washing machines instead of doing manual work, um, which leads to muscular at atrophy, um, and joint illnesses like frozen shoulders. Okay. All right, Rashika. I think you are going a little bit into the examples as opposed to the explanation, but yeah, it's, it's, it's not bad, Rashika. So it's not a specific example. So it's more of an explanation for sure. Rajvir says individuals use their smartphones and internet to shop online almost every day for food, clothes, and entertainment rather than going to the market on foot. They do not move their muscles and this leads to a lot of cardiovascular illness. Exactly. Very good, Rajvir. So as people sit in front of their computer screens for 10 hours a day to accomplish their office work, instead of doing manual labor, they do not get exercise. And this leads to obesity as well as cardiovascular disease. Furthermore, people play games on their smartphones. rather than uh, read um, academic books. And this uh, results in a lack of ability for critical thinking. Okay, now we could argue that some games require critical thinking and um, help and so on, but we're making a point here, right? And this side could be argued as well. Uh, so, here we go. Um, this is my explanation. As people sit in front of their computer screens for 10 hours a day to accomplish their office work, instead of doing manual labor, they do not get exercise, and this leads to obesity as well as cardiovascular disease. Furthermore, people play games on their smartphones rather than, I don't know what's going on with me today and tomorrow with this then, rather than uh, read academic books. And this results in a lack of ability for critical thinking. Okay, now comes the example.
So here, your example it should be a personal example, first person, uh, because the question is asking you uh, for your opinion. So when the question says, uh, give your own opinion, it's okay to use the first person voice in each paragraph so that you clearly show the reader your own opinion, okay? Uh, some students don't give their own opinion until the very, very end, the conclusion. Uh, it's not a good idea. I think it's awkward when we're reading an essay in third person and then in the conclusion, suddenly it's like, oh, and I believe, and it's kind of like, oh, really? Whoa, there's the author. Suddenly we hear the author. Um, it's If it's a first person essay, which means that the author includes their subjective voice, like I believe, I think, uh, it's good to hear or to read, um, hear, <laughs> to read, uh, the subjective voice of the author in each paragraph. So we want to have that kind of I, me, my at one point in each of the paragraphs, okay? And you can see that here in our introduction. So I believe the positives can be more significant, such as saving time and energy. Um, so we see it in the thesis. And a good place to see it in the body paragraph is um, in the example, okay? So, All right, so I'm going to keep it simple here and uh, humble myself. So uh, I noticed on myself that the more I use my smartphone for entertainment, learning, and shopping, the more I become lazy and gain weight, okay? I think that's all being honest. I think people will realize if they overuse uh, their phones, then uh, there's definitely some negatives to that when you're not going outside and not uh, exercising and not spending time with other intellectual um, tasks. Okay. All right. Sammy says, like my uncle John, who has been working as a software engineer for the past 15 years, spends most of his time on the computer and mobile phone, uh, as well as personal meetings on Zoom and Google. And he is now obese and has joint pains at the early age of 40. Um, yeah, Sammy, <laughs> David finds that funny, but <laughs> yeah, often we laugh at the truth um, because it's tragic, but it's true, right? Uh, Mohammed uh, Nazemi says, I myself have been struggling with getting my head around complex topics. This is most obvious when I'm studying, suggesting that using technology has had its toll on my creative thinking. Uh, yeah, very nice example, Mohammed. Um, wonderful and nicely expressed. You're using some great words uh, say, stating that, uh, has had its toll on me. That's an idiomatic expression and it's a good expression in this case. So well done, Mohammed. That's nice writing. Okay. That's from Mohammed Nazemi. Okay. Uh, Lee Stevens says, for instance, the constant exposure to blue ray from the screen of electronics devices um, has led to um, eye strain uh, f for you, right, Lee? So, for instance, uh, I'm exposed to the uh, blue ray radiated from screens seven to eight hours a day, and constantly I'm suffering from sore eyes. Yeah, okay, Lee, so uh, the physical element, okay? 
Uh, I'm amazed to see how many people have examples for this, but it's no surprise because it's a very relevant question in many of our lives. Amit says, for instance, my friend has been playing um, games seven hours a day and chatting on his phone rather than meeting with other people. And now his physical and mental health is quite poor. Yeah, okay, Amit. So you're on the right track. Define how it's poor. So has he gained weight? Um, has he become extremely malnourished, skinny? Okay, so lethargic. He's often tired. Okay. Lar Yint says, when a person plays football games on their uh, digital devices, even if they take part in many matches, it will diminish their state of physical and mental health. Yeah, they might have really strong fingers but certainly not the rest of their body, right? Okay, 545 Hamant says, I recently visited my hometown uh, and came across kids that were calculating their problems using smartphones, but they don't have better thinking towards solving problems on their own. Yeah, uh, Hamant, it's surprising when you go to a store and uh, for some very simple change uh, when you're shopping, the till or the um, sales agent has to use a calculator. Like you give them uh, $20, you bought some food for $15, and then they start typing in to realize that they need to give you $5 back. And you're standing there going, uh, it's just $5. 20 minus 15 is 5. You don't really need to use your smartphone for that. So that could be another really good example, right, of people's over-reliance on technology where uh, simple math equations uh, become challenging, like 20 minus 15, okay? All right, good. So when you're finished a body paragraph at home, you should check it, okay? Uh, so here, uh, the daily use of technology has created stagnant lifestyles whereby people are less physically and mentally active, and this leads to numerous psychological and physiological challenges. As people sit in front of their computer screens for 10 hours a day to accomplish their office work, instead of doing manual labor, they do not get exercise and this leads to obesity as well as cardiovascular disease. Furthermore, people play games on their smartphones rather uh, than read academic books and this results in a lack of ability for critical thinking. I noticed on myself that the more I use my smartphone for entertainment, learning, and shopping, the more I become lazy and gain weight. Okay. So, yeah, that reads quite well. Um, I'm feeling confident. I'm ready to move on to body paragraph two. Okay. Now, um... I could conclude this uh, before I go to body paragraph two. I could connect and conclude this. Uh, the one sentence that's somewhat kind of negligible is, or optional is that connecting concluding sentence. Um, so I could say something like, nevertheless, technology does have significant... benefits when used wisely okay so this could be my connecting concluding sentence but if you don't have enough time if you're writing a lot of words and you want to kind of take out a sentence from your essay uh, and still have a chance to get a band eight or even a band nine it's this connecting concluding sentence that you can kind of get rid of it's not that important for a short essay like the essay on the IELTS. Uh, the other parts are much more important. The, the connecting concluding sentence is um, questionable because you have a paragraph, the conclusion, and in such a short essay, that in itself, as long as you write it well, is enough. Okay? All right? Okay, so let's get going on this second body paragraph. Now, again, before I write body paragraph two, 
I'm going to read my second thesis point, okay? So, however, I believe that the positives can be more significant, such as saving time and energy for enjoyable, healthy, and social activities, okay? So that's my second thesis point. It's the side that I'm arguing for, so it's the side that I want to emphasize, that I want to give more strength on, okay? All right. All right. Janiel says, nevertheless, technology is more beneficial when uh, used precisely. I would use the word wisely or smartly. Okay, Janiel? All right. Okay, so uh, body two. Okay. So I'm going to write here a little bit, and then um, you write as well, and then we'll compare, okay? So try to focus on your own writing here, especially if you were here for uh, the start of the class so far, so you know what you're doing for body one, and then I'll take a look at what you've written. So I can see Little Mermaid that you're already going on this, which is great. I'll come back and take a look at that and reflect, okay? So certainly advancements in technology have alleviated... Okay. So there's my topic sentence, and then I'm going into an explanation. Again, quantitative language, okay? All right, so there's my explanation um, being quantitative. Ahmed, the reason that there's probably no sound is because I wasn't speaking. So I'm focusing on writing my topic, my controlling sentence, and my example. Um, so,
Okay. All right, so there is my answer explanation example. And uh, this time I'm not going to write a uh, connecting concluding sentence because my next paragraph is the conclusion. And uh, I don't really need a connecting concluding sentence before the conclusion. It's unnecessary, it's redundant, okay? All right, so at this point, I'm going to read my paragraph. Uh, to make sure it makes sense, it stays on topic, it's answering the right controlling idea. And of course, I'm looking for spelling, grammatical mistakes. So here we go. Uh, certainly, advancements in technology have alleviated much of the time and energy required to accomplish redundant daily endeavors, which uh, take up, because I'm writing in the present general sense, or sorry, took up, because it's the past here, it is took up. So, which took up much of the day for generations in the past. It's took up because it's in the past generations and has freed up many hours in the day to invest in other more preferred activities. Two to three decades ago, people spent many hours cleaning their homes, walking to work, doing the dishes, which can now be done with the help of vacuums, uh, vacuums, cars, not cards, so that's a typo, uh, and dishwashers, respectively. <clears throat> this word respectively means that uh, cleaning homes can be done with vacuums um, and um, dishwashers. Now, there is a little bit of weirdness going on here because I say two to three decades ago, uh, and I think that's not true because two to three decades ago, people already had vacuum cleaners uh, in cars. So you want to be careful about information mistakes as well. So to fix this, I would just say a century ago. Okay. So a century ago, people spent many hours. That's a little bit more accurate. Okay, so again, you're paying attention for spelling, grammar, but you're also uh, paying attention for uh, content or information mistakes, okay? Uh, examiners do catch that, all right? So instead of these uh, chores, people can go to the park with their families or have a barbecue with their friends, thereby having more fun and enjoying life. Just last week, I saved three hours of my time on Saturday by throwing my clothes into the washing machine. And instead of painstakingly doing it by hand, I used this time to go bowling with friends. Okay, very visual, very observable. Uh, it's easy to sympathize with this example as well. Okay. And let's make a little bit more correction there. All right, so now the body paragraph reads well. It's clear, it's convincing, and I'm ready to go on to the conclusion, okay? All right, uh, let's see what some of you wrote as well. Let me uh, give a little bit of reflection on that. So, Rajveer, I can see that it's your explanation there. Appliances such as washing machine, dishwashers, and ovens have significantly reduced human effort and time to carry out everyday chores, and people can use the saved energy and hours to read their favorite novels and play their favorite sports. Absolutely, Rajveer. Yeah, very good. Okay. Um, very, very good. And we'll see, Rajveer, in a bit how that actually feeds into the conclusion. Viral Gatti says, advancements in technology has brought many advantages for people as they can complete their daily hectic work through the use of machines for washing clothes in a short period of time, maybe an hour. Okay, and then keep going with it, uh, Gatti. So you have a good start there. Just keep moving with that idea. Bakrat says, advanced technology has given information... Um, then rather than looking for it <clears throat> uh, in a more cumbersome way, so something that takes more time. 
Uh, it helps people to finish their work with precision and in a short time, uh, making their day available for other activities that they enjoy. Uh, Bakrat, you have some good ideas. Try to be more specific and, and be a little bit more careful with your word choice. That will help you to be a little bit uh, more specific. Okay. All right. Kyber says, for the topic sentence, technological improvements have assisted individuals to perform their daily tasks in less time, with less time and uh, energy. Uh, this time and energy can be spent on other activities such as playing sports and spending quality time with family. Very good. Okay, that's a good start. All right, so now we have the conclusion coming up. It's your last paragraph. Conclusion has three parts. The conclusion has the main points restated. Okay, your argument or your position in this case uh, emphasized. Okay, and what's called a take home message. So some kind of message that is valuable uh, for the reader so that they can take with them um, to think about and to make use of in their lives. So uh, clearly, advancements in technology have had positive and negative impacts on human life, namely uh, physical and mental well-being and um, use of time and energy. Okay, so that's kind of my points restated. Now my position. Um, with uh, many perspectives considered, I am in support of using technology to decrease a demand of human effort uh, so that more time can be spent enjoying life. Okay, so that is uh, my perspective or my point restated and now I need a take home message and what's my message? Well, if I read my essay and I go through my thoughts carefully, my message here really is um, it's uh, not so much about the um, the technology's uh, influence on the individual, but rather the way that the individual uses that time and that energy that's freed up uh, through uh, the help of technology, right? So importantly, each person must wisely decide uh, the best way to make use of the time that technology enables so that they become healthier and happier rather than the opposite. Okay, so that's kind of my uh, take home message, right? It's fair enough, technology uh, enables us to have more time, more energy. Uh, if we use that time and energy unwisely sitting in front of the television, 
and playing a video game nonstop, then yeah, that's going to have negative effects. But if we use that time to uh, go play some sports, to uh, have an intellectual discussion, have a game of chess, uh, then arguably we're going to be happier and healthier. So um, it's it really comes down to our uh, decision of how we use that time, right? So that is the conclusion, okay? Uh, so main points restated, the position or argument strengthened, and then some kind of a take-home message that can be clearly observed from uh, the essay that we wrote. So here we go. Uh, let me just read this clearly. Advancements in technology have had positive and negative impacts on human life, namely physical and mental well-being and use of time and energy. With many perspectives considered, I am in support of using technology to decrease demand of human effort so that more time can be spent enjoying life. Importantly, each person must wisely decide the best way to make use of the time and energy that using technology provides so that they become healthier and happier rather than the opposite. Okay. All right. Uh, so that's your completed task two essay. It should be roughly 300 to 350 words for that band nine. 250 words is the absolute minimum. However, it's rare that 250 word essays get the highest band scores because 250 words is not really enough to express the concept 100%, okay? All right, I'm out of time, everyone, but uh, we finished the essay. Good job. Uh, if I didn't read all of your comments there, and I see Rashika Bakrat and many others are typing still, don't forget, that's still great practice for you, okay? So typing into the chat, practicing, even if I'm not correcting or not giving you feedback, uh, for that specific comment is still really good practice, okay? So I highly recommend participating and doing that in the class. Okay, everyone, for lots more help, definitely check us out at aehelp.com for academic IELTS and gieltshelp.com for general IELTS. Again, these websites have all of our videos, practice exams, strategies. You just click that big red button to join. It is a one-time payment for lifetime access, or at least until you pass the IELTS exam. Uh, and it's a fraction of the cost, so it's well worth investing a little bit of money just to have all of that information on your phone or on your computer at any time. Academic IELTS, same idea, blue background. Click it, buy it, enjoy it. And uh, tomorrow we will have speaking part two, speaking part three. So make sure you join me for that. That will be at this time, part two for members, part three for everyone. Of course, everyone's welcome to watch all the classes. I'm Adrian signing out from Victoria for now. Hopefully I will see all of you tomorrow. Thank you, Sammy. Thank you for the good wishes. Much love back to all of you. Bye for now.